welcome back to my channel. So we are going thrifting today. It may not look like it because I'm in my studio right now, but we are doing a different kind of come thrift with me today. Home decor that is inspired by McGee & Co. and Studio McGee. Their home decor pieces are so beautiful and I love them so much. And nothing obviously beats the original. However, being frugal, because I am indeed frugal, I wanted to see if it would be possible to thrift and recreate these at a fraction of a cost. So that's why I'm calling this Thrift to DIY. So that's what we're doing today. I hope you love it. And without further ado, let's go thrifting. So because we're looking for some high-end dupes, I thought what better place to look than my bougie thrift store. I thought this is the perfect place to look because normally I find some contemporary finds and I feel that is much in line with Studio McGee. For instance, this tray right here actually reminded me of a tray that Studio McGee has. Unfortunately though, it didn't really look like it so I moved on. However, I saw this tiny tray and thought it would be the perfect base for something that I had seen at Target. I gotta be honest though, I got a little sidetracked at times though, like for instance I was looking at this, this has nothing to do with Studio McGee and McGee & Co, but I was just curious at what it was. However, because I was looking in that direction, I actually found a great Studio McGee dupe on the shelf below it. I gotta admit, I was so excited when I found this because I've been a little obsessed with this shape in particular. I would have loved for it to be larger, but this is a great size too, so I happily snatched that up. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't come to the thrift store with particular projects in mind. I just have basically their website memorized at this point, so I was just looking for the shapes that I knew kind of corresponded with their design styles. And I honestly didn't think I was gonna find some items in the kitchen section that would go well with the Studio McGee design and decor, but I did find this marble tray, and no, it's not something that Studio McGee has, but they do have like this marble green coasters that they have on their website, so it just reminded me of that. It's funny because when I came up with this thrift challenge for myself, I really didn't think it through. I didn't really think what happens if I don't find anything that I can DIY do. But I think it's because when home decor brands are so popular, they tend to have people who kind of like follow suit and kind of create those home decor pieces and imitate them in such a way. Also, I got sidetracked by that frame, but I was looking in the art section because I wanted to see if there were any kind of landscape pictures that could be like almost like a dupe of McGee & Co's style. And when I saw this wooden bowl, I knew exactly what I was going to recreate with it. It varies slightly to what I'm comparing it to, but I think it's going to come out great nonetheless. I also found this pedestal bowl, which is actually very popular in Studio McGee home decor style, uh, but I didn't think it actually looked exactly like what I was comparing it to, so I picked it up, but maybe we can dupe it later. Same for this vase. I was comparing it to something that it actually didn't look like at all. So that was unfortunate, but I did pick it up anyways. So first up is something that I technically don't have to do anything to. I could potentially do something to it, but for this purpose, I think I like it as is. So I found this vase. Studio McGee, they have this style vase. I'm pretty sure this one is on the Target website and you can probably find it in stores. I thought this was a great dupe of that. So I'm really excited about this one. Now, like I said, I could dupe it into the Westerly dip vase, but I've seen so many people actually do that. So I think I'm gonna keep this one as is and I think it's a really good dupe of that vase. And this vase was $2.99 by the way, so $2.99 versus the price of this. I think this is a great substitute, so really happy about this one. Speaking of vases, I also found this vase. Now this vase, I think there are more than one option that I can do with this vase. I could do the gold rim vase. I'll put it right here, but I'm pretty sure it is on Target's website as well or in Target. So I could do this. However, what I think instead, what I'm going to be doing with this is the Nessa ceramic vase. So I thought about this and thought this would be a great dupe. It's not too hard, I think it's relatively simple anyways. And this was only $1.99, so with cost of materials, I'll let you know at the end how much it costs to make this dupe. Keep watching to see how I transform this into that. 
Next up we have this tray. I've seen this tray in the many times that I've gone to my bougie thrift store and so when I saw this one on the website I was like oh my gosh I've seen that in stores let me see if I can find it again and sure enough it was still at the bougie thrift store so I picked it up. Now there are different styles there is this one that I'm going to be recreating. Now I think this one would be a little bit easier to recreate. However, I don't know why, but I was really drawn to the one with like the orange. This was only $1.99 by the way, and I'm pretty sure it's for holding like candles, but I thought this would be a perfect tray in order to recreate that. But this one was $1.99 by the way, and cost of materials needed, I think we could do a recreation this very cheaply. Last but not least is this bowl with a lid. If you've been on their website, you probably have seen this wooded lidded bowl. So we're going to try our best to recreate it. Now, obviously it's not exactly the same. I have a little bit of an indentation here where the knob is, but at the same time, I am pretty confident that I can get this with lighter. This one was only $1.99 by the way. So again, we are starting well off with pretty low prices as far as the dupes go. So I'll be interested in seeing if we can create the dupe for a fraction of the cost. So let's go ahead and get started with dupe number one. So first up is the Nessa Ceramic Pot. So for this DIY, I had to take a trip to the hardware store and I think I picked up what it's called Cove Trim. The wood trim was $9.44 though and I wasn't about to pay that. So I got this material poly, you know what? I'm not even gonna try to say it. It was like a foam board material and it was only 418, so that was a much better price. And of course I had to measure out how long those pieces needed to be. So I'm just using a marker and marking it on the cardboard to make sure that it's long enough. So then it was time to move on to my cuts. Now I'm using a chop saw primarily because I just wanted to speed up the process, but this is not necessary at all. It is like a foam material, like I said, so you could definitely use a handsaw and cut through it very easily. Also, I got two eight foot strips of these trim pieces. Now I didn't know how much I needed, so I just ended up cutting all of it. So I ended up using one and a half. So I think that's pretty good considering. And once my pieces were cut, it was basically time to just glue it on one by one. So nothing spectacular. I just used hot glue to glue the edges and then place it on top of the glass. This trim material, whatever it's called, it bonded really well actually to the glass. So I was actually pleasantly surprised. So because of that reason, it basically took me no time at all. While I was placing the trim on this base though, there were two things that I made sure to do. I made sure that the lip of it was kind of covered by this trim. Also, I made sure that the seams were pressed together as much as possible. And after a quick dry time, it was time to move on to spray painting. So for this, I just used a simple satin white to cover this space entirely. I wasn't too worried about covering it completely though because I was actually going to cover it with a second coat after I did my next step. So once that was completely dry, it was time to move on to using my spackling to cover up all the holes and all the seams. So because I use this cove trim and because it has a curve to it, it doesn't kind of butt up to the glass itself. So I wanted to use spackling to kind of fill those holes. And honestly, the spackling tools were a little too bulky for this particular project. So I just ended up using my finger. You could definitely use gloves or use another tool if you don't feel comfortable doing that though. So for the rim of this vase though, I tried my best just to smooth it out as much as possible and to make sure that I didn't have excess spackle all over the place. Basically, I wanted to look smooth enough for it to pass as a ceramic. Once the top was done though, I moved on to the seams on the sides. So again, just using my finger, I took the spackle and kind of pushed it in the seams, making sure that I filled in any of those cracks that were poking out previously. And going in with a clean finger then, I would then wipe off the excess spackle that was still there. Now when it comes to smoothing it out, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough that you can easily sand it off. But of course, texture isn't a bad thing on this either, especially because you kind of want it to look like a ceramic. So texture wise, I would say that just comes down to preference. Now the great thing about the spackling though is that it turns white when it's completely dry. So once that I saw it was dry, I just went in with my 220 grit sandpaper just to kind of clean up and smooth out those edges. 
For my vase, I left a little bit of texture, but I mostly sanded it off. Once it had been sanded to my liking though, it was time to go back in with spray paint once again. I basically ended up doing the second coat just to cover up the spackling. And I also wanted to make sure that everything was completely the same color. And this by far was my favorite project of the day. Next up is the decorative wood stone tray. So for this dupe, I'm gonna start off with Rust-Oleum stone, a stone texture, just to make it kind of seem more like an actual stone piece. I decided to put this on before the color though because I wanted the color to cover this stone color that I had. I quickly coated it with a white just to give the piece a little bit more dimension. And then I quickly moved on to putting on my beige cream, which is going to be my top coat. So I covered this and sprayed it quite well, but I also left some white peeking out. And this again was just to kind of give that stone kind of variation. I also grabbed dry dirt and kind of sprinkled it on top just to give it again that texture that it needed and that dark kind of hues that was on the inspo pick. And I sprinkled that on while it was still wet. However, when it did finally dry, I decided I wanted to go in with some paint to again, just give it more dimension and variation. So I started off with my gray color and I kind of just started painting various shapes on this little tray. I would shape it as close to the inspo pick as possible and then I would go in my finger and then dab it and kind of just make sure that it kind of muddled and kind of faded a little bit. And I've just basically repeated this for various parts of the tray, putting gray where I saw fit, and then just kind of blending it in. It was also important for me to mix in some various sizes too. I didn't want them all to be big. I wanted some tiny dots. And again, I just wanted to make sure that I was blending it too, just to make it consistent. Once I was done with the gray though, I moved on to my white. So I just kind of put white dots everywhere. I thought it kind of looked like it needed to have white dots. I purposefully kept these smaller in size though, but I still did the blending technique for these as well. And for the brown color, I really kind of just minimally put that in certain places. Again, I followed the inspo pick, but I mostly kept that brown color towards the edges to kind of just give it some shading. And once I was done and let it dry, I moved on to my final step. So I sealed it with Mod Podge clear acrylic. And when you put something like a sealant on it, it makes you feel more confident in the fact it will last a long time. And last but not least is the wooden bowl. So the first thing I did was use my 60 grit sandpaper to sand off as much as the finish as I possibly could. This was primarily because I was going to be using bleach to kind of change the color of the wood. And I knew that having it down to its raw wood would make this much easier for me in the long run. Of course, with that being said, it is much more difficult to sand it off completely when you're hand sanding it as opposed to using electric sander. Now, this was my first time ever doing a bleach method for wood. So I basically started off with a one-to-one -one ratio, equal parts water to equal parts bleach. And I have no idea why I'm doing this without gloves, but thankfully I did actually remember my gloves after the second application. So by the time I got to the fourth application, I just did just bleach. I know that there are wood bleaches out there and maybe I should have used that instead of just my traditional Clorox bleach in the house, but I figured it was there, so why not? And this was my fifth application. And by this time I realized that this is as probably as light as it's going to get. So I put the last coat on and left it out in the sun to dry.
guys, that is it for the thrifting to DIY and DIY dupes today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you watched my channel before, I do thrift flips and I wanted to know and see if you guys would kind of like this different setup where I'm bringing you along to the thrift store with me. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing and you really liked how this video was kind of done, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed, if I pass that vibe check for you, definitely make sure you're subscribed and you hit that little notification bell so you're in the know when I post again. But I also want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!